Today's video is a top 30 winter fragrance list <laughs> and the first five are going to be my personal choices. The rest is up to you. I asked you in a live stream and also in the community tab what your favourite, if you could only pick one, one of the absolute favourite fragrances that you wear in winter, what would it be? And we got a lot of responses. So I'm going to start with my choices and then I'm going to hand it over to you and we can see what your favourite winter fragrances are. The first one, Royal Oud by Creed. This is one of the more recent ones into my collection. Beautiful, spicy kind of cedarwood and it's a lovely fragrance for the winter, for the cold weather. Uh, it's even better when it's got snow covered on it and ice. <laughs> and this is spicy, kind of warm, rich, woody quite masculine but perfect for the colder weather and Creed Royal Oud is my first winter fragrance that I like to wear in the cooler weather. The next one, speak, Keeping with a Woody Theme by Killian Sacred Wood. This is a lovely sandalwood fragrance. It has been re-released, it was discontinued. They re-released it. I have no idea whether the formula is the same. I cannot comment. Mine as many of you know, does have real Mysore sandalwood oil in it. I added it myself because it's a, a refillable bottle. If you like sandalwood, it might be worth checking out. Again, I don't know what the new formulation is like, but when it's cooler, I love this one. If, to be fair, I wear it all year round, but especially in winter, I think it's very good. Next up is Devotion by Matriarch. This one is about here, I've used quite a bit of it. And this is a really an incense fragrance. This is rich in resins, it's spicy, it's woody. Um, there's kind of a, a green leafy cannabis-like note in the top. I think she probably used cannabis essential oil. Um, but yeah, this is very rich, incensey, spicy, ambery, woody kind of fragrance. One of the best incense fragrances, I think, but very, very good for the cold weather. Next up is Lita by Bogue. This one is freaking crazy. It's the closest relation to T-Rex, if you're familiar with T-Rex by Zoologist. It's got a very similar smoky kind of floral smoky accord. This one has big dollop of patchouli, there's tobacco, a little bit of florals, but that kind of vanillic smoky touch that it has is quite intense. To me, this is easier to wear than T-Rex. T-Rex is a bit more of an explosion, a bit more challenging to wear. This, The sweetness in here with this kind of almost caramel-like vanilla is very, very nice and interesting. It's a different kind of choice for winter. If you like something like um, By the Fireplace, Mason Margiela, that kind of smoky, um, kind of resinous, vanillic, smoky kind of thing, a little bit bonfire-like, similar-ish kind of vibes. This is a bit more intense, to be honest. A bit more niche. <laughs> but if you like uh, smoky fragrances, uh, this might be one you're interested in. I've reviewed all of these fragrances on my channel, and in the description below, I'll link to each review. If you want to hear a little bit more about my thoughts in detail, check out the uh, reviews under in the description for the ones I've talked about here. And the last one for winter, Bojnikov or Miss Bojnikov's Purple Hat, if you want the full name, by Fort Manley. This is lovely. This is a slightly barnyard, slightly animalic oud in the opening with a big dollop of lavender. And it kind of goes into a 
kind of a chocolatey like accord chocolate woods there's like different kind of you know cedar wood and things like that in here with the oud um, and you get kind of this woody chocolatey kind of dry down as the lavender tones away, tones back um, but very nice I really like this in the winter months that's my top five for winter I'm gonna head back home um, and have to look at the computer for the next part because it's all you your personal favorite winter fragrances if you could only pick one and heading into the top as a collective top 30 fragrances for winter there might be some you've never heard of there might be some that you want to check out here i'm going to head back home so i can see the laptop so i can see all the names because there's a lot to get through <laughs> we'll uh, we'll see you soon It's beginning to Lovely. It is quite cold, I'll be honest, the water is pretty freezing. Uh, I think my toes are going blue. Maybe not the wisest choice. <laughs> okay, we're gonna head back. Um, but this is one of my favorite spots. There's a plane. Can't see it. The sun's coming down. We better head back. Okay, let's navigate this. Uh, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. I am comfortably inside in the warm and we're going to continue with the rest of the top 30 list. These are all chosen by my subscribers. I did a live stream and I asked uh, people in the live stream if you could only pick one for the winter as your absolute favourite fragrance, what would you pick? And so we've got 25 fragrances here chosen by you as the best winter fragrances and we're going to have a look and see what kind of the group taste is. So the first one that was mentioned was by Maison Margiela, possibly butchering pronunciation, <laughs> but it's by the fireplace. I think most of us are probably familiar with it. I really like it, I almost bought it myself. It's a, a little bit kind of smoky bonfire, a little bit kind of sweet, warm, cozy, almost a little bit kind of nutty and um, very, it's got a nice kind of balance of sweet and smoky and it's just a very nice cold weather winter fragrance and I have some interesting information about that one. There is an indie singer called Miko and she's from Georgia in the US and it just so happens that I've, I, I got to meet her at a concert and we had a picture together and um, I used to do covers on YouTube, <laughs> on a different YouTube account and I used to play guitar and cover some of her songs instrumentally and she would actually watch them and comment and she was super kind and nice uh, in a geeky, I was kind of a geeky fandom kind of thing. <laughs> anyway, um, we spoke a little while ago on Instagram, on DM and she actually told me that her favorite fragrance is by the fireplace. It's the only one that she wears. It's the only one that she um, really likes. She wasn't a big perfume fan and then she smelled that one and she fell in love with it. 
so there you go, Miko wears by the fireplace. <laughs> the next one on the list is Dior Sauvage Elixir. This is a departure from the kind of the, the original Dior Sauvage, which personally I'm not a big fan of. This one goes in a different direction, more kind of warm and spicy. To be honest, to be perfectly honest, I have not smelled the Elixir version, I don't know. I'm going off from what I've heard from other people, but it seems to be popular, it seems to be a hit, and uh, so, yeah, that was um, another one that came up on the list as f your favourite fragrances for, for winter time. So it seems to be a popular one. Sticking with the designers for a moment, Spice Bomb Extreme was um, added as, as one of your favourite fragrances for winter. Another one that I quite like, I don't own a bottle of it, but I've uh, I've smelled it and I don't mind it. I don't mind the original Spice Bomb 2, I think both are uh, nice fragrances for kind of designers, they're not bad. And I can see the kind of why they're popular, and um, so yeah, good choice for the winter. Going a little bit more indie niche is by Slumberhouse, can't pronounce it, I think it's Jeki, Jiki, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know much about this fragrance because I've not had the chance to be able to smell Slumber House. They're pretty difficult to get hold of in the UK. But this one is meant to be an ambery kind of tobacco fragrance. I'd imagine it's pretty dense and kind of um, rich from what I hear of Slumber House. I'm sure it's pretty good. If you like amber tobacco, you might want to give that one a try. If you're in the US and they're kind of easier to get hold of in the UK, it's a little bit more difficult for us to try, unfortunately. Next on the list that you recommended as your one of your favourite winter fragrances is Leather Blend by Davidoff and it was actually based on my recommendation because I checked it out in I think Dubai or Doha or somewhere like that and I smelled it in the airport and I was like oh this is really good people should check this out it's nice. I would say if you like things like Ombre Leather by Tom Ford then you will almost certainly like Davidoff Leather Blend. It is very nice, it is a lovely suede um, more suede-like leather perfume, uh, completely unisex, and just really nice, comforting, very enjoyable. Like I say, if you like ombre leather, you'll probably definitely like the Davidoff leather, leather blend. Um, but that one was uh, one of your favourites for the winter, and I, uh, I think if you like leather, you should check that one out for sure. Going into the more animalic oudy fragrances, uh, this is by Botnikov, it's called Mysterious Oud. I have not had the chance to smell this one, so I have no idea how this smells, but I know Botnikov is, if you're not familiar with Botnikov, they're a long, you can compare them or similar kind of vibes to Arouge Lodore or Arouge Lador. They use very natural ingredients. The actual perfumer is an oud distiller themselves and they use their own oud in their compositions. Very much like a Rouge Lodore style. Um, mostly kind of natural ingredients, high quality ingredients. So mysterious oud obviously highlighting some of the oud distillations that they do. I've not had a chance to smell it, but it's one of your favorite winter fragrances. And um, yeah, let me know if you tried it. The next fragrance on the list was actually voted more than once, a couple of times. It's by Amouage, to see if you can have a guess. It's called Overture Man. This one, unfortunately, I have never smelled it, um, but I will smell it when I go back to India in February, so I'll check it out in the airport in Dubai. They have a, an Amouage counter there, so I'll get to try it, hopefully, if there is a bottle on the shelf. <laughs> Looking this one up, it sounds like it's kind of, kind of a little bit animalic, a smoky kind of fragrance, more kind of smoky, incense-y. Um, sounds maybe a little bit challenging for some people with the kind of animalic touches that it seems to have. Again, I've not had the chance to smell this one yet. It seems to be popular. I did have a read of some reviews of this one and some people like really, really love it and it's meant to be like super long lasting. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think you'd maybe have to like the animalic touches for that one going by the sound of it, it sounds a little bit a little bit smoky, a little bit kind of funky. Um, sounds interesting though, I would, uh, I'd give it a try and see how it smells. I've never found an Amouage personally that I fell in love with, uh, I, apart from Lyric Man which took many years because originally I did not like it, but the, the more heavy ones, Interlude Man I, I really disliked at first and then I tried Interlude Man, the one with the Black Iris, uh, Black Iris Interlude Man. That one was nice, I gave it a good review. Um, I didn't buy a bottle, but I thought the sample was good. Going into 
independent um, niche kind of perfumery. This one is by James Barry. He's got a brand called Suga. Apologies if I'm pronouncing it wrong. Suga, I think it's pronounced. And this one is Triple X. I have not smelled it. So I do not know um, how this one smells, but apparently it's based around honey, woods, vanilla, uh, cacao. There's a rum note, tonka, amber, and almond. So there's a good mix of kind of more slightly gourmand, gourmand elements, woody elements, ambery elements. It sounds pretty good by the notes. And yeah, he's got a YouTube channel. If you don't know, he's a YouTube reviewer and you can uh, check him out on YouTube and um, he's got his own brand just like me started I think after my brand but yeah I've not had a chance to smell it if you have let me know your thoughts um, this one was recommended by Kyle from It's Caillou I think and uh, yeah Triple X by Suga the next on the list again I think this one had a couple of votes this is Christian Dior's Fev Delicious I think most people know what this smells like kind of vanilla-y kind of tonkery kind of um, slightly gourmand kind of thing going on with this one and very popular probably one of the more popular ones from the line of Dior in the private collection I think most people really like that one um, I don't mind it I don't fall in love with it personally but I, I definitely don't mind it it's not a bad smelling perfume but it's one of your favorite fragrances for the winter so there's a lot of people that do love it and the next one is another designer, Stronger With You, Absolutely, by Armani. And I have not smelled the Absolutely version. I've smelled the original version, and I didn't like it, personally. I don't know how different the, uh, the Absolutely version is from the original. You'll have to let me know if you think I should check that out. I probably will smell it as I go through the airport in Dubai in February and give it a sniff. But in general, the Armani designers don't tend to be my taste, personally but they are like really popular kind of mainstream popular they sell by the bucket load by the ship load by the arctic lorry load so obviously very popular very mainstream kind of fragrance and one of your favorite winter fragrances so the next one is by Nimier I don't know how to pronounce it but Lady of the Sonnets and yeah this one I have never smelled anything from this particular brand um, but it's a floral woody, it's got freesia, hydrangea, lily, the sandalwood, patchouli, tonka, amber, and musk. So it sounds like it's a more kind of floral woody amber. Um, it might be interesting, but it's one of your favorite winter fragrances. Have you tried it? I have not tried it. I have not tried any from this brand. Maybe you're finding some brands in this video that you've never heard of. But if this is a list of fragrances that you could only pick one of your absolute favorite fragrances for winter and these made your list, they're obviously pretty good to some people. And so you might want to check them out if they sound interesting to you notes wise. The next that came up uh, multiple times on the list but different fragrances from the same brand, I'm going to mention the ones that did come up is by Hans Hendley. He's a New York based perfumer although actually he moved to Texas recently but a US indie perfumer and I've interviewed uh, Hendley on my channel, Hans Hendley. The two that I remember that came up on the list was Roseanthol which is a beautiful kind of fruity kind of rose fragrance, a kind of a little bit jammy. The other one was one that I reviewed recently called Bloodline and so Henley came up a couple of times in the list and I can definitely see why I think Henley makes great indie perfume and if you haven't tried them you definitely should try and get yourself a sample pack because they're very good. The next on the list was from Ducita and it's Oud Infini and this thing is potent. This uh, from memory was a loud rose fragrance with an animalic touch. There's uh, kind of a funky barnyard oud. There's a little bit of civet. It's kind of funky, to be honest. It's got it's got some punch to it. So oud infini is kind of a rose oud combo, I guess, with a little bit of barnyard funk to it and some spices. But that was one of your absolute favorites for the winter. Sticking with the rose oud theme, um, another one that was suggested or that you gave as your favorite winter fragrance was Pearl Oud by, by Killian. I've smelled this, I had a sample of it. It is eternally lasting. I mean, it lasts days on your skin. It's kind of, um, I would say more of a bright, bright rose, kind of fresh, bright rose, but paired with a little bit of a 
slightly skanky oud, uh, lots of different spices. So it's kind of a, like a spicy oud, rose oud combo um, that is, like I say, just ridiculously long, long lasting. But the rose note is actually quite bright and fresh. Um, so, yeah, if you like really, 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 really long lasting fragrances, try that one. <laughs> Uh, the next on the list that was um, recommended was Musk Ravageur by Frederick Marle. Unfortunately, this one smells disgusting on my skin. <laughs> this smells like a public urinal. It's got a very pissy, urinous kind of undertone on my skin. That's skin chemistry dependent, not everyone gets that. The dry down is lovely with that kind of musky vanilla kind of dry down thing. But the, yeah, the, I don't know, the... Yeah, it doesn't work for me, but if it works on your skin, a lot of people do love it. Unfortunately for me, it smells like a urinal on my skin chemistry. <laughs> but for you, for some of you, it's your favourite winter fragrance. A brand that I have not smelled, it's called Fleur de Pointe, and this one is Python Sauvage. Apparently it's a smoky kind of woody fragrance. People did seem to complain about the longevity when I looked at reviews, they kind of weren't happy that it didn't last very long. But yeah, smoky kind of woody fragrance. I've never smelled anything from this brand, but for one of you out there, it's your favorite winter fragrance. So uh, if you can get a chance to try it, if it sounds interesting, if you like kind of more smoky woody fragrances, maybe that you can add that to your to sample list. Moving on, there is another selection from a YouTube YouTube reviewer, a fragrance YouTube reviewer who started their own brand. And this is Mr. Oz. Um, a lot of you may know Mr. Oz. Um, I've done videos with him in the past. He's one of the, uh, well, he's a very good reviewer. He doesn't upload anymore, sadly, since launching his brand. But this, the one that was uh, mentioned was Detoma Azuma, one of his original ones. I reviewed it. I thought it was pretty cool. It's kind of, um, the notes of chocolate, coffee, vanilla, resins, woods. It's kind of, it's dark. You get that kind of coffee chocolate thing. Um, kind of dark, woody, um, yeah, very kind of interesting. I did a full review if you want to check it out. But Motive Olfactive, that's Mr. Oz's brand. So yeah, there's a couple here by uh, YouTube reviewers turned indie perfumer. To be fair, and I haven't added my own fragrances to the list, but a few of you <laughs> did say that your some of your favorite winter fragrances were Centauri. I don't know if you were just being like overly nice on a live stream, but you, uh, thank you to the people that did mention that. There was a few comments, a few of you mentioned, uh, well, I won't mention my, I don't like adding my own stuff into lists like this, but a few of you did mention my own personal brand Centauri perfume, so thank you. Um, they're not in this list, however. <laughs> I felt funny adding them. Um, so the next one is Carlisle by Parfums de Mali. I thought I knew this one, but um, looking at the notes, I don't think I do. I was getting confused with a different one. But this one, looking at the notes, it says apple, spices, tonka, rose, vanilla, and patchouli. Um, I thought I had a sample of this at some point. Maybe I did, maybe I didn't, but I'm not, I can't remember smelling one with those notes. So for me, I, I can't comment, um, but one of your favorite winter fragrances is Carlisle, which is interesting because, like, you know, when I think of Parfums de Mali and like the, the common ones that come up, I think of uh, Harrod, or is it Herod? Um, whatever it's called, Herod, I think. <laughs> Leighton or Leighton Exclusive, those kind of ones uh, come up kind of more uh, frequently. Moving on with the list, uh, another one of your favorite winter fragrances is Eau Noir by Christian Dior from The Private Line. And this one, I've never smelled it, but it's uh, kind of herby, spicy. There's a kind of a licorice note. There's leather and violet and things going on. It sounds pretty wild. I think I, maybe I did smell it. I think Timmy from Imagine Scent may have owned a bottle and I might have smelled it in Las Vegas when I was at his house. I can't remember, um, but I'm not, from memory, I don't like recall this one. So yeah, there's like there's lavender in there and all sorts of stuff going on. It sounds interesting. I can't comment on whether I think it's good or not, um, but it's one of your favorite fragrances for the colder weather for the winter. So. Moving on, the next one that was mentioned is a designer fragrance. It's called Magnifique by Lancome. This one is marketed more towards women and it's kind of a spicy woody rose. This is another one that I have not smelled, but um, I like I like rose perfumes personally. So um, I would be open to giving that a try. 
and just because it's marketed towards women, I'd imagine it could possibly be unisex. I'd have to smell it. Some are kind of, uh, some perfumes can be overly feminine for some guys. Um, so I've not smelled that one, but yeah, if you if you're into a kind of more spicy kind of rose, maybe you like that one. If you tried any of these, let me know if you uh, agree. If they're like some of the best winter fragrances. Next on the list is Fraghorn 2 by Pinewood. I have never smelled anything from this brand, so if I'm hearing kind of new things, maybe you are too, maybe you've got some inspiration for things you might want to try samples of at some point in the future, that was the idea. You kind of get a, a collective taste of, of, of other people's favourite fragrances from the Fragcom, and it might give you some inspiration of what to try. This one's juice is super dark and it's kind of meant to be more kind of foresty and woody. Um, lots of kind of uh, foresty kind of woody notes in here. So yeah, it sounds pretty cool, sounds interesting. I think there's some resins in there as well for memory. But if you like more of those kind of natural forest kind of smells, that might be something that you're interested in. Um, and if you've not heard of the brand, check them out. I've never got to smell anything from them. So maybe you're learning something new. Um, and we'll carry on with the next fragrance. The next one I will probably butcher the name, but Mark, um, Mark Antoine Barroy, something like that, and the fragrance is called Ensalade, I think. <laughs> notes of rhubarb, cedar, sandalwood, leather, tonka, and vetiver. So if you like the note of rhubarb, you might want to check that out if you're into kind of more leathery, woody kind of fragrances. Sounds interesting. I quite like rhubarb sometimes. Um, so that could be... That could be interesting. I have never smelled anything from a few of these brands, which brings shame upon my heart as a fragrance reviewer. <laughs> uh, the next one is by Diptyque, and yet another one I have not smelled. Unbelievable. Uh, Benjoin Behemi. Apologies for the pronunciation. I cannot pronounce some of these names, but there you go. This one sounds pretty interesting. It's thick and resinous by the sound of it. Benzoin Peru Balsam. Rock Rose and Patchouli, so it sounds like it could be kind of a more earthy, kind of ambery, thick, sticky kind of fragrance by the sound of it. The bottle's pretty cool, I have never smelled it. If you've smelled it, if you smelled any of these, uh, let me know if you think I should try them personally. So we're on the last two uh, of the top 30 winter fragrances as voted by you, although the first five are mine, so I guess 25 voted by you. <laughs> The next one is by Profuma Roma, and it's Batatito da Ali. No idea. Batio da Ali. Can't pronounce it. Um, cocoa, myrrh, orange blossom, tobacco, coconut, and vanilla. It's kind of an odd mix. Um, I'm trying to imagine how that goes together, and it sounds strange to me. <laughs> but it is one of your favorite winter fragrances, so I'm assuming it's good. At least for someone. Someone it's good. One person's pot of gold is another person's turd, so what can you do? And the last one on the top 30 list is Tobacco Oud by Tom Ford. This is the only other Tom Ford fragrance that I would consider purchasing outside of Tuscan leather. I reviewed it, I gave it a great review, I think it's a very good fragrance, I like it personally. And yeah, if you like tobacco fragrances, even if you don't like tobacco fragrances, I'm not a huge fan of tobacco and I like that one. So, yeah, kind of deep brown, woody, yeah, it's just good. There's a little bit of a sweetness there, which stops it being too dry. Um, but yeah, Tobacco Oud, very good. I can see it as a, a favourite for the winter. I don't own it, but I like it. And like I say, outside of Tuscan leather, it is um, one of my favourite from Tom Ford Private Blend. That is the top 30 best winter fragrances of 2022. Um, and 25 of them are voted by you. And the idea of this video was really to get a collective idea, not just not, not not just me as a one individual, one little person giving you a list of loads of fragrances to try, but this is actually the core audience of the channel saying, you know, I'm a fraghead, I have a collection of perfumes, this one is my favourite fragrance for winter. And that way you're getting a, a big kind of bird's eye view of, of possibilities and ranges of taste as well. You can see there's quite a, a variation in taste of fragrances here. 
And so I thought that would be kind of fascinating. Maybe you find some brands that you've not heard of before. Maybe it's given you some ideas of what to sample in the future if these are some of the best voted fragrances by you, the audience of Fracom, so to speak. Um, so I hope you enjoyed the video. I will see you soon with another one. Take everyone. Goodbye. One time he disappeared for oh, two or three days. When he came back, they, they asked him where he'd been, and he said, oh, just sailing. <laughs>